Two centuries ago, Sarah Bartman died after many years spent appearing in European freak shows. Although Bartman died on the 29th of December 1815, her exhibition continued. Her brain, skeleton, and sexual organs remained on display in a Paris museum until 1974, and her remains weren't repatriated and buried until 2002. Today, she is seen by many as the epitome of colonial exploitation and racism, of the ridicule and commodification of black people. In this video, we explore the tragic life of Sarah Bartman, also known as the Hottentot Venus. Keep watching to learn about how this South African black woman was so cruelly treated in Europe. Sarah Bartman was born in the Eastern Cape of South Africa in 1789. She belonged to the Khoikhoi tribe, also known as the Hottentots, which were a nomadic pastoralist people. As a young woman, Sarah Bartman was taken to Europe to be exhibited as a freak show attraction. Her physical characteristics, which included a protruding buttocks and elongated labia, were seen as exotic and fascinating to Europeans. Brought to Europe, seemingly under false pretenses, by a British doctor, she was stage-named the Hottentot Venus. Bartman's life was one of huge hardship. Her mother died when she was two, and her father, a cattle driver, died when she was an adolescent. She entered domestic service in Cape Town after a Dutch colonist murdered her partner, with whom she had had a child who died. In October 1810, although illiterate, Bartman allegedly signed a contract with English ship surgeon William Dunlop and mixed-race entrepreneur Hendrik Caesars, in whose household she worked, saying she would travel to England to take part in shows. After arriving in London, she was immediately put on display at a museum in Piccadilly. Her exhibition attracted large crowds, and she became a sensation overnight. Her physical features were the subject of much fascination, and she was often depicted in a demeaning and objectifying manner. Sarah Bartman's exhibition was not limited to London. She was also exhibited in Paris, where she became a fixture at the Jardin des Plantes, a botanical garden and zoo. Her exhibition in France was even more elaborate, with her being forced to perform for audiences and engage in sexual acts. The reason was that Bartman, also known as Sarah or Sarchi, had what was called stetopigia, resulting in extremely protuberant buttocks due to a buildup of fat. These made her a cause of captivation when she was exhibited at a venue in London's Piccadilly Circus after her arrival. You have to remember that at the time, it was highly fashionable and desirable for women to have large bottoms, so lots of people envied what she had naturally without having to accentuate her figure, says Rachel Holmes, author of The Hottentot Venus, The Life and Death of Saatchi Bartman. On stage, she wore skin-tight, flesh-colored clothing, as well as beads and feathers, and smoked a pipe. Wealthy customers could pay for private demonstrations in their homes, with their guests allowed to touch her. Bartman's promoters nicknamed her the Hottentot Venus, with Hottentot, now seen as a derogatory term. Back then, the Dutch used it to describe the Khoi Khoi and San, who together make up the peoples known as the Khoi San, the British Empire had abolished the slave trade in 1807, but not slavery itself. Even so, campaigners were appalled at Bartman's treatment in London. Her employers were prosecuted for holding Bartman against her will, but not convicted, with Bartman herself testifying in their favour. Bartman's show gradually lost its novelty and popularity among audiences in London, and she went on tour around the rest of Britain and Ireland. In 1814, she moved to Paris with Caesars. She became a celebrity once more, drinking at the Café de Paris and attending society parties. Caesars returned to South Africa and Bartman came under the influence of an animal exhibitor with the stage name Roe. She drank and smoked heavily and, according to Holmes, was probably prostituted by him. Bartman agreed to be studied and painted by a group of scientists and artists, but refused to appear fully naked before them, arguing that this was beneath her dignity. She had never been fully naked in any of her shows. This period was the beginning of the study of what became known as racial science. Bartman died aged 26. The cause was described as inflammatory and eruptive disease. It's since been suggested this was a result of pneumonia, syphilis, or alcoholism. The naturalist Georges Cuvier, who had danced with Bartman at one of Rowe's parties, made a plaster cast of her body before dissecting it. 
He preserved her skeleton and pickled her brain and genitals, placing them in jars displayed at Paris's Museum of Man. They remained on public display until 1974, which beggars belief. The domination of Africans was explained with the aid of science, thereby establishing the Khoisan, the Hottentots, as the most ignoble group in the progression of mankind, purported to mate with the orangutan, wrote Natasha Gordon Chipembera, editor of Representation and Black Womanhood, the legacy of Sarah Bartman. After his election in 1994 as president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela requested the repatriation of Bartman's remains and Cuvier's plaster cast. The French government, although initially reticent, eventually agreed, and this happened in March 2002. In August of that year, her remains were buried in Hankey, in eastern Cape Province, 192 years after Bartman had left for Europe. Sarah Bartman's story has been the subject of many works of art and literature. One of the most famous works inspired by her story is the play Venus by Susan Laurie Parks. The play explores the themes of race, gender, and exploitation and has been performed in theaters around the world. Sarah Bartman has also been the subject of many films and documentaries. One of the most notable is the documentary Black Venus by director Abdelatif Kachichi. The film explores Sarah Bartman's life and legacy and has been praised for its sensitive and nuanced treatment of her story. Sarah Bartman's legacy is multifaceted and complex. On the one hand, she is a symbol of oppression and the exploitation of non-white bodies. On the other hand, she is a symbol of resilience and resistance. Her story has inspired countless people to stand up against injustice and to fight for the recognition of their own humanity. Bartman is honored in many ways. Her grave in the Eastern Cape has become a site of pilgrimage for those who wish to pay their respects. There are also many cultural institutions that have sought to honor her legacy, including the Sarah Bartman Center for Women and Children in Cape Town. 